it's art, isn't it? It's, um, you know, if the words look good and you kind of feel what it means without knowing exactly, that's about the greatest statement ever, isn't it? If you've clicked on this video, chances are you are in the small elite group of people who believe that the random conversations and the random connections that I've made here are worth listening to and that you know you're going to get something cool out of it. And so I appreciate you. And I do believe that this group will be expanding in the future. John Robb is such a cool guy. When I started just kind of letting the rest of this conversation play so that I could edit out any bits of time where I'm like, let me look at my notes. Mm. And just like let the conversation flow apart from those moments. I went back to the website to prepare for this introduction and reading the manifesto again for Louder Than War magazine that he is the editor of, it just sparked something inside of me. It woke me up and it made me feel excited. I'm going to read some of the parts of the manifesto and I'm going to put the link to the whole website so that you can check it out. The world is ours. No corner of the planet is beyond bounds. Norwegian death metal, Brazilian freak punk, bale funk, M Mexican keef bop, English punk, electronic pop, Angolan curdero music, North African hip hop, the foulest bed sits, dubstep, Manchester lad bands, Turkish gypsy music, Goa trance, Japanese freak noise, African rhythms, Carnatic folk, Greek mohawked anarchists, and Indian metal hardcore. It's all in here and more. We celebrate the classic Anglo-American axis, but we are not constrained by it. We are open to suggestions. We are open. Ha <laughs> ha! I love it so much! I love that the Anglo-Saxon... That's not the standard. It's one of the world, and that's just such a cool thing about music, is bringing the world together. Ugh. Okay, let me carry on to the other points of this manifesto that really made me excited. Do you believe in the power of rock and roll? We still believe in the power of music, and we still believe in the counterculture. Yeah! It makes me think about an amazing video of David Hoffman's. David Hoffman Filmmaker, check out his channel. If you want to get up close and personal with history and just learn from a wonderful, wise guy. He made a video about, that uh, had a wonderful title of, Did the rock and roll of the 1950s cause ch people to sin? I've, I've enjoyed learning so much about how rock and roll played such a vital part in desegregation and that there were so many people fighting against it, fighting against equality for people. Like the counterculture was treating people like people. And if people think that that's anti-God, then they have no idea about who God is. Oh, my heart is pumping so fast. I'll share some more of these manifesto points at the end of this video and some more ramblings about it then, so I hope you'll stick around for that. Hello and welcome to this podcast conversation of the Epic Kate Show. Hello, John Rob. Hello, hello, hello. Epic Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I just liked the name of it. Um, no, it's great. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> So I loved reading the manifesto thing of your website for Louder Than War magazine because it's just so much about authenticity and just that whole spirit of appreciation for music and for individuality. Yeah, well, I think it's music is, I mean, obviously it's very important in my life, but I think music is more than just the music. It's the culture. Um, the energy as well, and also it creates a space for things to happen. I think all those things make it a very powerful art form. It's empowering, so it makes people um, do amazing things. You know, people, you, who are, a lot of people outside the system, you know, get a chance to do something uh, creative, you know, which is not something you taught when I was growing up in the 60s and 70s. It wasn't something you were taught at school that much. You were never encouraged 
to make art when I was growing up, but music said, go on, do it. So we did. Yeah. And a lot of my friends did. Um, and that's why it's, it is a great art form. And you can apply that to a lot of other things in the world as well. That's like the spirit of being a punk, isn't it? Like, I will not assimilate. I'm going to be my own person. I'm going to walk to the beat of my own drum. Would, would, you, would you agree with that? Kind of. I think a lot of people have different interpretations of what punk is. Some people think it's just drinking loads of cider and going to sleep in the park. That's fine. That's their interpretation. My interpretation is it's an incredibly powerful, empowering art form that gave people like me the opportunity to play music, but also do other things as well. It was inspiring, you know. Um, yes, it's, there is a strand of individualism, but I also believe in community as well. I think it's important to think in community terms, you know, think of other people, which is um, not very rock and roll, but, you know, maybe that's an old-fashioned rock and roll idea that it's all about me, me, me. You know, we, I think in the pandemic, we found that thinking about yourself isn't really the way to go forward. So, like, you end up with... When Donald Trump in America was, in a sense, he was a rock and roll president because it was all about him, you know, it's about how much he could eat, how, how many people he could be abusive to. It's all, every, everything was about him, nothing about the rest of the country. And I think uh, maybe that was the end point of that kind of post-war individualism. I mean, I, I, think, I think it's great that people are individual, but you have to think in terms of the community and everybody else as well. And in a sense, you have to think about the people you, you have nothing in common with and don't agree with as well. You, you can't shut them out. I mean, I think that's the worst thing about the internet. It's made everything black or white. People, I agree with you. I don't agree with you. And there's nothing in the middle. I mean, I, was, I would like to say to a person, I don't agree with you. But I, I think we could find somewhere between us a little piece of common ground that we could agree with. We're, we're, we, you know, we're sharing this planet for a few decades you know, let's, let's not fall out over it. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll talk you over to my point of view in the end. Well, let's uh, in, in the middle. I'm not going to argue. Let's let's I'll, I'll listen to you. I'll, I believe in listening. I think it's important to be a listener. And I think in, in times of the Internet, there's too much shouting. Yeah, yeah, very good. There's too much shouting and not enough listening. That's the trouble of our times, you know. And I think if we listen to other people more and didn't automatically disagree you put up a, you put up something about trump i completely hate you no 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 you put something about trump i don't agree with you but I'm, I'm, let's talk about something else let's find the common ground and then we'll, then we'll get to the bit afterwards yeah <laughs> that is such a fascinating and really necessary point of individualism doesn't mean have have to mean being self-centered it can just mean like this is who i am this is how i choose to hold and carry myself this is the music I love, and I respect what you, how you dress, how you hold yourself in the music. Yeah, you. completely. Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm a very individual person. I mean, things I'm in, I'm the only person. I mean, that's probably trouble my bounds. I mean, I make music that doesn't really fit in anywhere, you know. And I, I live my life by my my own rules, but I don't live my life by my own rules to stamp on everybody else. You know, I respect everybody else's position what they're into, what, you know, the culture they like. Maybe, maybe that's just because I'm an older person. <laughs> you start getting like this, you know, but when I was younger, I mean, yeah, of course, when you're younger, you have to make your little space in the world. So you have to like shout about it. But then, then once you've got your little space, then you think, well, yeah, let's embrace everybody else as well. You know, it's, um, I'm not an individual despite everybody else, you know, it's, it's a big difference in there. So, so when I was, when we talk about Sweden and the pandemic and the idea that Swedish people, didn't need to be told what to do because they, they had a communal, uh, you know, people think in terms of community. It's powerful. I think that's, that's a great way, isn't it? Nobody had to be forced to care about anybody else, which the, in other countries they tend to be, don't they? And it's that sense of community is something we should cherish and hold on to, shouldn't it? You know, it's, I don't like it in England, you know, when old people are banished to the, ed to, to the edges of the city or whatever. Even the term old people, like what we, we like a different animal, like the dogs, cats, old people. <laughs> um, and I thought that, I'm not, obviously, I would say that now because I'm getting older, but when I was 20, I thought that as well. Like, I always knew old people when I was younger, you know. I was one of those weird teenagers that, that spoke to old people walking down the street. I would speak to anybody walking down the street. I think it's, um, it's a good way to live, isn't it? And 
you know, everybody's got a life and nobody's life is more valuable or more interesting than anybody else's, you know, it's, these, this, these, these are just truisms. This is, this is just the way it is, isn't it? This is how you, this is how you have to live as an animal in the community. <laughs> it must have been difficult to write that manifesto for your thing because you have so much passion about so many different things. No, it was really easy. I could write it any time you want because I, I totally believe in that. You know, I, I think I write manifestos all the time and I, I, I think it's good. You should always question your manifesto. So you should never be, uh, that, you know, that's how I live. But it's good to have one. But you should always question everything, constantly question everything. I think it's, uh, especially what you do yourself, you know, your own music, culture, art, the way you live. Why am I doing this? Can I do this better? You know, it's, but that's me. I'm not saying that's for anybody else. I'm, I'm a disciplined person. You know, I can do 18 hours of work a day if I have to, you know, to make things happen. And that's the way I live, you know. And other people like to, to relax in the park. And I don't like relaxing. I like doing stuff. <laughs> I, find, I find relaxing really stressful. And I like creating and I like ideas and I like making them happen. You know, that's, that's how I am. That's how I roll. You know, it doesn't make me better than anyone else. It's just... You know, some people like tea, some people like coffee, some people like dogs, some people like cats. I like ideas, I like work, some people like sitting in the sun. <laughs> so here's a question. If you could sum up louder than war in one sentence, what would you say? It's a music website for fans to write about their love of music and culture. So it's, it's not really music journalism. It's people write about how much they love something. We've got some great writers. We've got, we got some really academic writers, like this woman in America, Audrey Gordon, I think she's called. I never met her, but she sends me these amazing academic articles, really engaging, really fantastic writing. Why else have normal people write about music? And they're not, they're not proper writers, but they love music. And, and I say to them, you don't have to write like a proper writer to engage people with your love of music. You know, sometimes a piece of music or you could put a YouTube clip and put that's fucking brilliant. And that's all you need to know. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be deconstructed into what it means into the culture. I mean, I love that stuff as well. I think everybody reacts to music in completely different ways. And I don't think, I think the problem, a lot of music uh, media is certain type of people do, you know, people who've had college educations and they like the sort of music that goes with college educations. And that's great. There's also a lot of other people out there, who like different types of music and they're engaging in different ways. And I want to hear how they engage in it as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's really cool. So I have a question. What does the thing about ignore alien orders mean? Like where does it come from and what does it mean to you? Well, it's, it's Joe Strummer's guitar. Joe Strummer, the singer of the clash, who is a very inspiring figure in punk rock, you know, where, uh, he had, he had an optimism and let's get this thing done attitude, which I guess rubbed off a lot of people growing up at the time, like me, whatever. But he used to have a sticker on his guitar with ignore alien orders. And you could never work out what it meant, but it just sounded great. You know, I think sometimes it's poetry, isn't it? I think some of the greatest things in pop culture, it's not politics. It doesn't have to make any sense. It's art, isn't it? It's, um, you know, if the words look good and you kind of feel what it means without knowing exactly that's about the greatest statement ever, isn't it? I don't expect a band to lay out a, a political manifesto. You know, we're going to uh, allot 17% of our budget to do this and that and that. That's not for musicians or art people, but our, our things to empower people and create the energy to make the changes happen. You know, make people feel so brilliant that maybe they don't make music, but they go and they they, they go and work in an old people's home or they become doctors or nurses or social workers. Like a lot of people in punk did because they wanted to look after people because they're inspired by punk. By, by phrases like ignore alien orders, I guess the meaning of it will be ignore the orders coming from the people that run things because generally those people are alien. And it doesn't mean people from other countries, which, which it means people who went to the right schools or the people, you know, the posh schools or whatever. Those people are, they're the real aliens. The, the aliens in, in my world aren't, aren't people from other cultures and other places. I live in Manchester, so most, one of the most multicultural cities in Europe. It's what makes it fucking brilliant. You know, what a great place to live. You walk down the street, every different accent, every, the block of flats I live in just down the road, I get in the lift and I people, meet people from Brazil, Africa. There's a woman there, an 80 year old woman from Africa lives in my block and she's, she wears African traditional clothes 
and she's made the garden at the back into like a little African garden. Isn't that amazing? I mean, that's this is the north of England. It was never like this when I grew up. It was so white and everyone had chips and drank beer. And now it's everything all mixed together in the melting pot. And when people go, oh, it's just a metropolitan bubble, I go, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad I live in a metropolitan bubble because I grew up in a place called Blackpool, which is uh, just up the road, 50 miles away, a holiday town. And ironically, for a town called Blackpool, it was the whitest place you could possibly grow up in. And it was rubbish. You know, there's no, there's no, you need lots of different cultures to make culture, you know. Rock and rolls from black music, you know, that's how it started. I wish people knew about this. You get really right wing people into rock and roll, they don't even realize that the rock and roll would not exist if it wasn't for Africa. <laughs> the, the, the guitar, even the word guitar is an Arabic word, it's al guitare, it's, it's a guitar is an Arabic instrument. We're already in a multicultural society, so stop moaning about it, you know, let's celebrate it. <laughs> yeah. And you know what's great about Manchester? Everyone's welcome here. You know, like, so if you're Swedish, come here. If you came on your own, you'd have friends. Within an hour, you'd have, like, loads of friends. You know, you just sit, you sit here, and people would just walk past, and they'd hear your accent and go, oh, where are you from? And they wouldn't be going in the negative way. The possible way to go, oh, you come from Sweden to Manchester. That's great. <laughs> and that's, so, that's the world I want to live in. So, yeah. so a big purpose of the magazine as well is to introduce people to music of other cultures. Yeah, I don't, I don't actually think we do it enough. I think we should do it more. I've got, um, there's a few friends of mine that actually live in Africa and they've been sending me loads of great African electronic music, which is getting made at the moment. Because Africa, is, it's interesting Africa because it's, there's an image of it, of being, you know, uh, everyone's starving in a desert. But a lot of Africa is very modern and very 21st century. Yes, it's got problems. It's got, it's got old school governments and, and presidents who won't go away. You know, they, they just won't leave when it, they get voted out. But the, the kids there, the generation, the young generation, is very, it's, it's got the youngest um, population in the world and it's very forward thinking. A lot of the cities are changing now. They're not all decrepit. I went to Africa about 20 years ago. A lot of it was broken there. But those cities now are starting to get it together. And you can hear it in the music because I think music always reflects the culture. So a lot of this um, electronic music really stands up against any electronic music in the world. And what's really interesting it's, it's very, it's quite dark a lot of it, and it's quite um, icy, you know, it's very Scandinavian sounding, and it's made in a really hot place, in a, you know, hot, dusty city. And that's fascinating as well, isn't it? That, like, dark, icy sounds could appeal to somebody living in a hot, dusty city, you know? And I love all that. I love the way, it never makes sense, does it? You know, what music and culture people find attracts people is never the obvious one, is it? You know, we can... You know, it's, and that's that's amazing. And I mean, because the internet, everything's all everything's up in front of you all the same time, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So it's not like um, no culture is in hardly any culture is in isolation now. But at the same time, the whole world has not become McDonald's. You know, people's every city's still got a distinctive flavour. So when I go to Sweden, it does feel Swedish, and it's not just because of language. But you look there, the buildings look Swedish. People dress slightly different. The way they react to music is different, you know, the way they are, the way they walk. You know, there are there are differences. It's different in England, the cities are different from each other. You know, Liverpool's got a different vibe than Manchester. Birmingham's different again. You can feel the differences. People dress slightly differently. The way they react to music and culture is different. And I think that's so fascinating. But despite the fact that we're all joined together on the internet, we're all we all still have our regional differences, viva differences. Yeah. <laughs> When people are listening to each other's music, it helps them to understand them in a way that can't really be defined. Yeah, in a sense it does. And in a sense, you don't even have to understand it. You know, the mystery is what can make music great as well. You know, the bits you don't understand. I never want to understand. You know, I, I like the way it's, it's mysterious. You know, like some music is, is works because it's so obvious. But some music you can listen to a thousand times and it sounds different every time, you know, or or it conjures up images in your head or reactions you don't even understand because it's been made for such a different culture. I mean, some of my favourite musics, I really love North African uh, desert music, you know, uh, you know, made, made in Morocco and Algeria. Well, I'm not from those places, you know, but somehow it just connects to me. It's very hypnotic and it's very repetitive and sometimes it just pulls you in and I don't, even, I don't understand how you dance to it. I don't even understand how you play it, but, but it's, it's, it's got a mystery to it. It's the sound of the desert. And 
I, I love it. And I, I've seen people play it in little tea rooms and rooms in Morocco and stuff. And you know, it's really weird if you're a musician, you always connect with other musicians all over the world. No matter what kind of music they're playing, you tune into it. I went to a Uganda on a trip once to talk about music and they had a gig that night. And there was a guy playing little cymbals like this. And another guy played a small harp thing. And, and I got, they said, you've got, you've got to play with us. And I got on stage with a bass guitar and just jammed with them. I had no idea what they were going to do, but I just, you could feel it. After about a minute, you go, okay, we're in. We're playing together. And we're all like big smiles go, whoa, this is ace. It was like, it was like the greatest language ever. Because, I mean, I love words and communication. There's only so much you can say with words, but with music, you just say so much more, can't you? And also, the other thing about love like music, it's, it's about harmony mostly. And the harmony between musicians and the audience is harmony in a time of, of a fractured time like this. Music is actually what joins people together. So when you get two or three people singing together, is, or I, sometimes I use a choir. And this is when I realize this. If you get 40 people in a choir singing together, it's like, whoa, that's transcendental. Because it was a moment of total harmony in the chaos of the 21st century. And I think that's another role that music plays. And it's not just the choir singing. It's the audience coming, going, you know, you know, the audience starts to nod, it come in on the nod, and they're feeling the harmony as well. Mm. And it's not about bands lording it down to the audience. It's everybody's joining together. Communal again, isn't it? Everybody's in that space. And the audience is part of it. The audience is not separate. It's everybody's in that room melting into this amazing communication. Yeah. It just sounds like such a spiritual, sacred thing. It is. I think it is. It's, it's something that's so part of the human soul. And this is why everyone is really missing live gigs. It's funny because I just, well, the reason I'm late is because I'm just watching the band uh, playing like a films gig, you know, and it's just sitting in a room watching people play. It's, it's really amazing. I've been to a few gigs. Like you have to sit down about 10 feet apart, but at least they're gigs, you know, and just watching people playing instruments again is, is ace, you know, and the joy they get from playing playing them is, you can feel it, can't you? You know, it's, I mean, I don't, I don't think of music as a career, you know, look, fortunately for me. <laughs> I, I just see it as art and, and creating stuff, you know, you make stuff and you try and get all those ideas and try and make it into a song and it doesn't matter if it works or not, you just... I believe in ideas and you make you have an idea, you have to make it happen. No matter no matter what the odds are, you will make that happen. And if people don't get it, it's not my problem. I'll just go and do another one. <laughs> yeah. Shake the dust off of your shoes and go on where people will appreciate just keep it. Keep going, yeah, yeah. It's it's not I mean, there's a lot of great I mean, there's a lot of great pop records, but they're different. It's, I think it's a different way of making music. A pop record is very skillfully made and it's made to you know for people all over the world to connect to dance to whatever but i don't make music like that i make music i can hear in my head which is which is different unfortunately it's different from that well if only it was pop music then, then my life would be a lot easier but <laughs> it's just the way it is though isn't it you can only you can only make the music you get lost in yourself you know and i think uh, but that doesn't mean I, I see it as either or i mean i have a lot of respect for people make pop records and some pop records are amazing it's just a different way of making a piece of music, you know. Yeah. The, the, the principles and values that you're so passionate about and that you wrote about on your website, I just was thinking, these are the best people in the world. The people that resonate with these things were like, oh, I, didn't, I didn't phrase that very well. No, I, yeah, I think I know what you mean. I, I think in a way... We, we become catalysts for the people. So, you know, there's always a few people like what we do, and, but they end up actually being in other bands who do really well. <laughs> so they, they kind of take the energy and the spirit and they somehow work a way of, a way of making it more mainstream, which is brilliant, you know. It's, there's so many huge British bands. I, they played with us, supported us when they started, you know, and we knew them from when they started and they were definitely inspired by what we did, but uh, what, what we still do, actually, but it's, but they had a knack of making it into, into, into smaller chunks that people could actually understand. <laughs> yeah, it's like translating almost. Yeah, it's in a, yeah and I think, I think that's, fair. that's fine. Isn't it? You, you find out a lot of music, there's people operate on the fringes, usually come up with the ideas, and other people take the ideas and make it into, into, into the mass market. But that's great because it makes the mass market 
more interesting. You know, it's, it brings in different ideas and different flavors and that. Mm. Yeah. As long as people don't forget their roots yes. and remember to think and support the people that got them where they where they are. Well, it's it's nice if they do, but they don't have to, you know, because I think when you when you're a successful band, it's so all consuming. I mean, I, I know it's like on tour. Once you're on tour, you're in that world. You're in the van world. And the rest of the world just disappears. I mean, mm. you just play the gig, you get four hours sleep, you go back in the van, you sit there like a zombie all day. But a lot of the time, I and mean, you should sleep in the van, but I can't because I'm looking out the window and go, wow, look at that forest, it's amazing. <laughs> look at that castle over there. God, look at that, look at that. I'll never get to here again. I've got to get this all in my head like it's running like a movie. And then you get to the next gig, sound check, beat, gig, then sell, you know, sell a few T-shirts, pay for everything four hours sleep back around again and then the rest of the world just disappears and and then, then you know sometimes you get the news you go whoa what happened last week Jesus I missed that <laughs> there's a world yeah I mean, it's, it's, it's not it's not the way you really want to live but it's, you can't get out of it because it's um, because you're exhausted really I and mean, it's, it's, it becomes very primal survival <laughs> eat sleep gig eat sleep gig <laughs> yeah I haven't lived that intensely, but pretty much more intensely than a lot of people when I was a traveling actor. So I know about I was, you know, different people's yeah, houses a few nights and just constantly going on the road. Yeah, it's exactly the same. You know what it's like. And it's all about you focus on what you're doing and all the other stuff kind of fades away into the background, doesn't it? Mm. I mean, if you if you could actually do both, that'd be ideal, but it's just it just becomes too much, doesn't it? And, yeah. yeah, I think it's just such a special thing when you're able to find your people that resonate with your values and with your heart and just want to be connected that way. Like with my this year, you're a guest on my YouTube channel right now and, I, and I'm sharing these conversations with people and I just I know that there are people that would resonate with this. And I and I want to get them over here and have them join this community, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, it's true. I think that's true in life anyway. And it's, um, you find lots of people you get on with, but it's very rarely you find people you utterly, completely connect with, isn't it? And, um, you know, and, and it's a ping pong of ideas. You know, they, you know, you have ideas, they have ideas. And the way they look at the world is very intriguing as well. You know, and that's, when you get that, you should treasure that really, shouldn't you? You know, it's, it's, it's I mean, it's not, you can't get that with everybody, can you? And, a lot of, you know, superficial friendships are fine, aren't they? Just saying, hello, how are you? You know, you like those people, but those people where you go uh, really in depth, is, that's amazing, isn't it? I mean, that's what we're on the planet for, for those, you know, that small bunch of people you find that you totally, utterly connect with, you know? And they could be the most random people, can't they? <laughs> or it could be like on tour and you only meet them for two hours after the gig and you think, wow, that was an amazing conversation. I will never see you again. <laughs> Boy, do I know that feeling intimately? Yeah, but it's a plus, isn't it? Because it's a conversation you never would have had, isn't it? So if, if you've never done that life, you know, and that two hours is they're the golden moments, aren't they? You know, when 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 you're really old, you'll you'll remember all those moments. You know, that's what made this thing worth everything. You know. Mm. Yeah, I remember this feeling so, so strongly when I, I used to speak German, not so much anymore. I forget Swedish has replaced the German part of my brain, but I was having a conversation with somebody who remembered war, World War II as a child and remembered like American soldiers giving them chocolate and stuff. And I'm like, wow, I'm an American having a conversation in German with someone who's lived through this history. This is incredible. Well, it is amazing, isn't it? And I, I think, um, to me, that those stories are the powerful history stories. The big picture is never the picture. You know, I was talking about this before, you know, in England, we always get taught by the kings and queens, and that's our history. But the real history is normal people. You know, the baker or, you know, the person digging gardens. What was that? When you know what their lives are like, you know what that century was like, you know. I was reading this thing today about the end of the Roman Empire, and they were saying that most people in it didn't even know it ended because they, they, they didn't even know they're in it because their lives were just normal lives. You know, it's you know, it's poor mass communication. You have no idea where you were. You, you just didn't see the village, your crops, your neighbours, 
and that'd be it. You know, you you wouldn't know what country you're in. There's no concept. The country didn't exist. It didn't even have borders then. You know, it's uh, it's, it's it's kind of weird. It's like a modern obsession, isn't it? In a, in a sense, you know, there, there's no there's no real sense of being in a country, even in Europe, to about the 18th century. You know, they, you know, a Swedish person would be somebody who spoke Swedish. You know, or a Norwegian would speak Norwegian, but it wouldn't really be a country. They just be people they can understand what they were saying, and that would be about it, really. Yeah, and it wouldn't really matter, you know. Was, they're just trying to sell them a cabbage, and that'd be it. Yeah. Reminds me of this line in this musical called Chess. Are you familiar with Chess? It was. Written. Oh yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. There's a song that the Russian sings called Anthem, and one of the lines is, "My land's only borders lie around my heart." It's true, isn't it? Yeah, it's really true. Yeah, I mean, I know there's practicalities in how we're going to arrange billions of people into small planets. You, you probably need to have some way of making, you know, everybody's not in exactly the same place. It's going to be a bit of a squash. But, it's, um, but, but it, when it becomes obsession, obsessional, it's really odd, really bizarre. I mean, I, I'm, 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 from, I'm from the planet Earth, really. I mean, that's what you have to think, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Citizen of the world, right here. I mean, I, you look at uh, the birds, like swifts and swallows flying in the sky, and they've flown 5,000 miles, don't they? They don't, they, they, don't, they don't think they're flying over 10 countries. They just come here because that's what they, they've done forever. You know, that's sent, it's quite interesting, isn't it? You know, it's all these different ways of looking at the same rock, isn't it? <laughs> <sighs> Well, it's really, really great to talk to you. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share or way that you'd like to promote that people should come and check out this website? I'll just, just check, maybe just check out the website. Just come and find me on social networking. I, I've got stuff to sell, but I don't mind. People, people can find it by on, on the internet. It's not, that, it's not a big deal nowadays because people, people find you now, can't they? <laughs> I, oh, yeah. I, I realized I forgot to ask what does louder than war mean to you oh well that was there's a band called the Manic Street Preachers and they played in Cuba about 20, 20 years ago and Castro came to the gig and one of their road crew said to Castro uh, look after your ears they're going to be loud and Castro says they're loud they won't be louder than war and it's such a great expression and I thought Music is louder than war, you know, it's maybe this way to drown out all the negativity and, you know, and all the bad shit in the world. The music's, music is louder than war, and it? Culture is louder than war, you know, and culture rebuilds countries after wars, doesn't it? And culture also helps countries not, have, not to have wars, doesn't it? So it's an idealistic take on a phrase, and it's just a great phrase, really. Yeah, yeah I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. So the way that I um, finish my conversations is I give hugs. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way we could do it now, digital. digital. Yeah. <laughs> Someday I'll give hugs in real life and it's going to be epic. Yeah, well, it won't be long, about another six months to a year, I reckon. We'll get to that bit. We've got to be patient. <laughs> Brill. Yeah. Great to meet you anyway. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. bye. <laughs> Ignore Alien Orders was once written on a guitar. In 2011, it would be written in cyberspace. Also, I'd love to know what that what you feel from those words, Ignore Alien Orders. Like how do you connect to that? Words are my weapons. The writing as in the writing on this website louderthanwar.com the writing will be informative, but also emotional. I want people who are immersed in culture and want to fire you up with their love of it. Number 13, music is one of the last things we have left. No one owns it. We, all, we can all make it and we can all celebrate it. It is beyond the accountant's grim fingers. <laughs> people once wanted to save the world. Now they are saving up to buy it. We are a break from that. Hmm. The last point is, we are punk. Now there would have been a time when I would have thought, oh, I'm not cool enough to call myself punk. But that's, punk, as, as I'm understanding it from this conversation, 
from the different rock stars I've been able to hang out with on this channel. It's less about how other people think you're cool or not, and more of how you're deciding that you're not going to get caught up. Deci it's a decision inside of your own heart of... I will not be assimilated. What do you think? Anyway, I'm gonna stop this now and I'm gonna say hugs. And I'm gonna say a very punky thing indeed. Nostrils of death.